All right. Hebrew poetry is driven by creative restatement, either saying the same thing in two lines in parallel form or repeating the same idea but in the opposite way in parallel form or somehow building and embellishing on the ideas of the first line to go to the second line. So they'll continue that kind of idea of creative restatement uh, not only in parallelism but now in structuring larger passages uh, which is called chiasm. Let me show you how that works. Um, so parallelism is related to the lines of a poem. Chiasm shows the relationship of those lines to each other. So just as parallelism helps you to remember because it is able to use vivid imagery in short amount of words and ideas, chiasm adds memory because, or aids memory because of the way that the structure is put together. So the purpose of chiasm is to structure larger poems and to underscore a central idea. So we're going to talk about both of those and I'll show you how they work. Uh, something like this. Um, so here is a notation made by one commentator on how Psalm 37 is structured. And you'll see what the, the author has done is he has put together the ideas of verses 1 through 8 and said that that represents righteousness. Righteous must ignore the wicked. And you can see that's similar in thought to what's happening at the end of the poem. Um, God destroys the wicked but saves the righteous. The way this author has put together the second line and the next to the last line says exactly the same thing, that instead of the righteous and the wicked will be destroyed, they are destroyed in B2, but you can see how those two lines are related, those two sections. And then the third section, God blesses and upholds righteousness, um, is virtually identical to what's happening in the third to the last section. And then the two middle sections, which we're calling here D1 and D2, say the wicked perish, but the righteous inherit. All right, so the way that chiasm is notated is how you see it there on the left. The first line related to the last line, the idea A, or A, B, A, 1, is related to A2. B1 is related to B2. C1 is related to C2. And D1 and D2 are similar in uh, their arrangement. So you have the key, the Greek X, um, formed by the way that the lines are structured. Now, sometimes the area in the middle will be repeated and sometimes not. But either way, that part in the middle is the central idea. So if I were to ask you what Psalm 37 was about, you would say basically it describes how the righteous inherit uh, and the wicked perish. You see that? Because that's where the central idea of the whole poem is. The rest of it is description making those, helping to show that those two ideas, or that central idea, is true. So chiasm underscores a central idea. Um, so the main point of the structure will always be found in the middle. And just like in the, the one we just saw, uh, sometimes C1 is by itself. It doesn't mean it's unimportant. It means it's the central idea and everything is pointing to it and then everything is flowing out of it. C1 and C2, it could be repeated, but the central idea, uh, the thing in the middle, is what tips you off to what the poet's main point is. Here's some of the frustration. This helps to explain a little bit of why a book like uh, the Biblical Song of Solomon is so hard to understand. We, we read it and we want to see chronology. And so we're reading through it and we're going, this all seems out of order. It seems dis disjunctive. It seems like somebody took different poems and just slapped them together. And we don't understand what the arrangement is. But the thing is, Song of Solomon is not meant to be chronological. It is meant to have a central idea in the middle. And all of the, the poems are structured to point to that central idea and then to back away from it. So when you read it, uh, there will be two dream sequences. 
Uh, there will be two, one on each side, C, of the central idea. And this was uh, this is outlined. If you get a chance, I'll show you the books in a minute where you could do further study on it. But uh, S. Craig Glickman uh, did some research on the Song of Solomon, and he says the whole book is one big chiasm. Um, each section is parallel by a, another section toward the end of the book. So they match together until you get to that one central theme. And for Glickman, that central theme is the holiness of the wedding night. Because you see uh, the bride, you see the groom, and you see God's announcement at the end, um, welcoming them to enjoy what he, as a gift from him, has given. You see that? So that's the uh, chiasm. The whole book is a chiasm, uh, which means it's easier to remember. It uh, points to what the central idea is. And we, as uh, readers who are looking for chronology and getting frustrated, uh, the problem is not <laughs> the problem is not that the author was primitive. The problem is that we don't understand his pattern. And once we understand his pattern, so much the better. All right. So that's that's the difference. So we got parallelism. And we got chiasm. Parallelism is a restatement of lines. Uh, chiasm is a restatement of lines or even sections of lines in a poem to point to a central idea. So I hope you'll you'll consider that and, and take a look at some some texts. Uh, anything by S. Craig Glickman um, would be a great help in understanding chiasm, especially in the Song of Solomon. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for joining me.